Greetings everyone. Welcome back to Lamex FX. This is episode 5 of Grabbing Black Symbolism from Onimusha. Now, I didn't really try for this title because I didn't mean for this video to be more popular than any previous videos, so it's not a title that is very attention grabbing. But anyway, I'm just making this for people who are already on this journey and just want some questions answered. Now, in the previous episode, we discussed how in Onimusha, the Oni symbolized the blacks and the Genma symbolized Caucasians. But these Oni are destined to destroy the Genma, which means that the blacks are destined to destroy Caucasians. But that begs a problem. Black people have no power no military power, no economic power, even not even voting power, because even voting is determined by an electoral college, not by the populace. So when you vote, it does nothing for you. So these enslaved people have nothing that they could possibly do to Caucasian rule. So how are they supposed to defeat the invincible Caucasian? You have no gauntlet, no sword, you cannot even stand on your own two feet. Why fight the inevitable? Just like the Oni in the game, they are enslaved. But in the game, Oni power can defeat the oppressor. This, this is the real world. That is not possible to defeat your oppressor in the real world. Is it? It is. Take for instance the Oni Gauntlet. Samanosuke takes his tempered sword and tries to kill Osric, but it has no effect. Hitting him is like hitting a wall of metal. <laughs> Flee while you can, you worthless bug! <laughs> the might of his arm is just not strong enough, and the power of his sword could not pierce Osric. It's just that he is using the wrong weapon. He needed a weapon of the spirit. As stated in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And so, Samanosuke got a spiritual weapon. For the weapons to war against the Ginma are not carnal things like swords, spears, and money. And yet, it does things that other weapons can't. As stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And so, he gets the Oni Gauntlet. The Oni Gauntlet is not a carnal weapon. It is not a sword, nor a spear. It is not a gun or bow and arrow, but it is a weapon nonetheless, somehow. You see, gauntlets are made for defense, not to attack, but somehow this gauntlet can pierce the soul and spirit, so even the invincible demons can't resist it. That comes straight from the Bible. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. For you see, the Bible also is not for attacking. It is made for politics, for legislature, to set up laws for a kingdom. And yet, it is sharper than a two-edged sword. It will literally destroy kingdoms for you if you use it. Because if you ever read the Willie Lynch letter, you would learn that the correct way to destroy a black man is to make him disobey the laws of the Bible. How could I die by the hand of a human? But I hear some of you say, wait a minute, didn't the Caucasians use the Bible to destroy us? And answering that question is why I love using video games to explain myself. Because when you're using Onimusha and you see what happens in the game, I can show you just how stupid that question is. For instance, Marcellus had the wind gem that belonged inside the Oni gauntlet, right? And Marcellus was using that wind gem to kill Samanosuke. 
But the question is, just because Marcellus had it and tried to kill you with it, does that make the wind gem any less yours? No, it belongs to you. It is yours. And the demon like Marcellus does not deserve to have it. Similarly, in Onimusha 2, there are Oni jewels that will give Jubei power. And Juju Dorma had one of them. Just because she had it and was using its power to strengthen herself, does that make the jewel hers? Not at all, because it is an Oni jewel. It belongs to the Oni. This Ginma heathen stole it and you will take it back. The Bible is the same. It belongs to you. It gives you power. So take it back. The reason your enemy has it is because it gives you power. He needs to keep it away from you and keep it out of your hands. So if you want to win, take it back now if you're still contending you might think that the bible is useless it's just a book after all you've tried everything to make life better and you'll say i went to church and that bible never helped anyone but i'll explain if you have a sword resting in your house and you go to your house every day one day robbers come and mug you I'm going to ask you after that did you use the sword and you would answer me yes I used it after all I visited my house every day and I looked at it and then I would ask okay I see you looked at it but did you actually use it did you unsheathe the sword did you fight with it did you put sword play into practice now the reason I'm saying this is because having a sword around you and actually using it are two completely different things. And for that, when you go to church, they teach you they teach you not to do the commandments. They say it's done away with, but they read the Bible. You're hearing it. You are not using it. Those are two different things. For example, let me show you what happens when you do the commandments, since apparently church is not teaching you. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1 gather yourselves together yea, gather together O nation not desired what does that mean now black people you hate each other you are divided into bloods crips and all manners of gangs that I don't know the names of and what is more blacks hate Hispanics saying that Hispanics had them in slavery basically blacks hate Hispanics because Hispanics do what black people do which is stealing from and killing other black people because they're black. They're, they do what black people do. But anyway, both of you are hated by all other races. So God tells you, gather together. Basically, blacks stop being divided into gangs and blacks and Hispanics come together as one race. Now, what's the benefit of performing this commandment? Well, Guess who had a hand in building Black Wall Street? That's right, the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans when they gathered together because Caucasians didn't want to deal with any of them. When these three oppressed groups gathered as one race, they had economic wealth. Now, someone once told me, actually a few people told me, that the things that I teach you on my channel are dangerous. Even though, I am teaching you to be law-abiding citizens, to be cordial and peaceful, to be honest and non-violent. Hey, I am telling you to be peaceful and friendly with all people, regardless of race or ethnicity. And yet, it is true, the thing that I am teaching you is the single most dangerous thing that anyone could teach on the entire planet. Director J. Edgar Hoover was asked what is his opinion was the single greatest threat to the United States of America. Notice what he said. It, it, the question was asked, Mr. Hoover, what is the single greatest threat to the United States of America? His response was what? He responded, Negro unity. So Negro unity is the single greatest threat to the sovereignty of this country. He put that there 
and it's a, it's, it, it, and it's a threat to the ongoing operations. What has actually been done, you basically put a target on all of our backs because the quote unquote real Americans want their, con to, want their country to continue to flourish. But every time they see a brown face, you're the reason why my country is in trouble. Some of you hoped for peace with the Caucasians to try to find out how to make them like you. How can you get peace with them when peace was never an option? When just like the humans in Dark Souls, your very existence is a threat to the world that's available. But with all that, I will teach you how to be peaceful. Yes, let me show you how to peacefully destroy the world. Now, let us combine that whole unity of the Black, Specs, Native Americans thing with another commandment. What if these three groups collectively did the whole do not eat pork thing that is stated in Leviticus chapter 11, verses 7 and 8? Well, America's pork industry is a vital pillar in the nation's agricultural economy, contributing over 62 billion dollars annually. Now, we know that if Blacks and Hispanics choose not to do something, that company dies. That entire industry dies. And that is $62 billion gone. But also, there are other industries that rely on the pork industry. The energy companies and coal companies that had deals with anyone in the pork industry to make their meat dead. The ones who provide the food for the pork industries, dead. Antibiotics for the pigs, dead. Cleaning, dead. All connected companies, dead. And big companies like those in pork, the pork industry fund things like jails and they lobby for what is taught in the schools. So those companies that fund homosexuality being taught to your kids, dead. Those lobbying to push the school to prison pipeline, dead. And you know what is better? It also helps your health too because if you undercook pork, it is riddled with parasites and diseases. If you overcook it because you want to kill the parasites, the pork will produce carcinogens and will give you cancer at higher levels than if you ate other foods. You see, there's no in-between. There's either the parasites or the cancer because the parasites need the high temperatures to be killed. So abstaining from pork completely will save your life. And since you are healthier by standing for pork, that makes your medical bills and medical insurance go down. So you save money as well. But you'll say, if we do something like that, America will surely bomb us. But perhaps, but God has something for that as well. You see, other countries would watch the stock market, start stock market to see what is happening in the economy. And if America suddenly stops producing $62 billion, that means it is not spending money as much on things like, uh, I don't know, military. So com countries like China and Russia who have a bone to pick with America will take the shot. And I'm sure trying to fight China, Russia, Iran, and whoever else America wronged will make them too distracted to deal with you. And that's only the result of one commandment, maybe two. You make money, you save money, and you get healthier, while simultaneously breaking the, country, breaking the economy and causing other countries to see America as a target. But again, that is only one commandment. Imagine keeping all of them. Now, tell me, while imagining keeping all of them, in order to survive, which company in America does not require at least one cent? You see, there is a very big difference between hearing the Bible and doing it. That is why the Bible says in Romans chapter 2 verse 13, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Now, allow me to make this plain. Black people, Hispanics, Native Americans. The truth is, it is not that Caucasians hate you specifically. I mean, yes, they do hate you. They hate you more than all the other races upon the face of the earth. But it's not you. They 
it's not because of anything you did. They hate you because they hate God and his Bible. And because you are the people of God and the Bible is literally your very soul, they hate you because God and the Bible will prevent them from getting what they want. And your existence is how God's will is implemented. When you keep the commandments, that is how God's will is implemented on the earth. So that is why they hate you. So if you ever realize this and you do the commandments, that is what will cause their society to fall apart. Their society is dependent upon you being a slave and you specifically break the commandments. That's why every time they want to push homosexuality, the character who's normally homosexual is either a black or Hispanic because you need to sin. That's why when you try to look at food deserts and places where there are not many health foods, but there's a whole lot of pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster in the grocery stores, it's in the black and Hispanic community. You need to sin for them to stay in control. Actually, let me make this plain again. The most dangerous thing that I'm teaching you is that the blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and any of the people enslaved like them are the Israelites. The reason that's dangerous is because you'll have an identity and you'll have a, reason, a way to solve all your problems. And try, if you go to your Christian pastors and ask them, hey, am I an Israelite according to the Bible? And did my people go into slavery because we broke the commandments? Either A, your pastor will say, no, you're not an Israelite. Or B, your pastor will say, maybe you are, but that doesn't matter because you don't need to keep the commandments. It's all the love of Jesus. Why is that? Because if you decide you, keep, you want to keep the commandments, then the divorce court system will no longer have any power because you believe that we're not supposed to get divorced. The porn industry will not have any more power because you'll think thou shalt not commit adultery. The pork industry will have no more power because you want to be healthy now. And the jail systems will have no more power because you're deciding, I want to keep the commandments. And most sins that the Bible lists are also crimes in the real world so that if you commit those sins, you'll be locked up and the 14th Amendment will kick in and you'll become a slave to the court system working for free. All right. So in other words, it is profitable to teach you you are not the Israelites and you don't need to keep the commandments because breaking the commandments is literally what destroys your community. And that is what the Oni Gauntlet represents. The Oni Gauntlet represents complete defiance to the nature and customs that Caucasians had put for, in America for you to follow. And that you will say, no, I will follow the spirit of the Bible and not your churches, your politics, your schools, or whatever, or whatever it is you put up. I'm going to keep the commandments. And just like the Oni Gauntlet, the commandments will suck the soul out of this country leaving only you strong. And that is what Caucasians are afraid of. But despite all that, this alone is not the true terror that the Caucasians want to avoid. I believe it is time we talked about the Black Oni next time on The Mex Effects. <laughs>